In my opinion, there's no touristy places, just bad unprepared travelers. And if you're visiting Southern Italy, you really owe it to yourself to visit an island so legendary. It was the home of Roman emperors and poets for centuries. In my opinion, your travel dreams can either come true or be absolutely broken right here on the island of Capri. Castellanos with a tour guide, and today I'm going to give you the formula of how to have the most epic time right here on the island of Capri. A pearl of the Mediterranean, Capri is a paradise of crystal blue waters, dramatic cliffs, beautiful caves, and pebble beaches. It's an outdoor lover's dream come true where the island is the actual site that you want to visit because it's more about the lifestyle here than anything else. Capri is a legendary island that was a retreat for Roman emperors and a muse for artists and writers since the 19th century. Today, it's a stunning island that is synonymous with the Amalfi Coast and your invitation to do what Italians do best, live a life well lived every day. And trust us, you want in. Today, we're visiting Capri to help you maximize your vacation by planning better and smarter so you can have more fun and dive deeper into local culture. Before we get started, please hook us up with a like and subscribe so we can keep bringing you great content. And don't forget to ring that bell so you can keep up with our latest episodes. So here's some things you need to know to plan a fun visit to Capri. Capri is an island just south of the Bay of Naples and about five kilometers or three miles from the Sorrentine Peninsula and roughly 36 kilometers or 22 miles from Naples itself. As a traditional gateway to Southern Italy, Naples is the biggest transportation hub closest to the island. If you decide to skip Naples altogether, Sorrento is your next best option and is located 50 kilometers or 31 miles or about an hour south of Naples and can be reached via public transportation, train, bus or ferry or by car. If you're flying from the United States East Coast, continental Europe or the UK, you can fly directly into Naples International Airport, which is the closest airport to Capri. Curetti bus service is the most convenient way to get from the Naples International Airport to the city center or Sorrento. The bus stops in all the towns on the Sorrento Peninsula. Taxis and private cars are much more efficient for small groups, families, and even couples, but are typically much more expensive. If you're already in Italy, then taking the train is the most efficient way of getting to Southern Italy. Naples is on the main train line connecting to major cities like Rome and Florence. From Rome, Naples is an easy day trip since there are several high-speed trains per hour and taking just about an hour and 10 minutes from Roma Termini to Napoli Centrale. To get to Sorrento via train, you definitely want to take the Circum Vesuviana train that runs between Naples and Sorrento approximately every half hour and costs about four euros and takes an hour to get there. The pro move is to take the express train that is air conditioned called the Campania Express and has fewer stops. The Port of Naples can be the jumping off point to explore Capri and the Amalfi Coast. High-speed ferries and hydrofoils depart from Naples to Capri from the Molo Beverello Pier opposite the Castel Nuovo and take only about 40 minutes. If you're taking the slower ferry, they depart from Calata Porta di Massa and take about an hour and 25 minutes. The busy season is from mid-April to mid-October. Hydrofoils can definitely fill up quickly to Capri and long lines often form at the departure ports. To secure your spot, we definitely recommend that you book your tickets in advance. If you're leaving from Sorrento to Capri, that journey will take you 20 to 30 minutes and the port in Sorrento is called Marina Piccola. To reach the port, you can take the pedestrian stairs down from Piazza Tasso or the elevator from Villa Comunale, or even the public bus. Now, if you're departing from Positano, that journey will take you 40 minutes. Direct hydrofoils from Positano to Capri are available from early April until the end of October. The dock is located next to the Spaggia Grande, or the Big Beach. And if you decide to depart from Amalfi, there's definitely boats from there too to Capri. Those will take you about 50 minutes. If you want to take a small group or private boat tour to and around Capri that includes all the transportation, don't worry, we got you. We have options from Rome, Naples, and Sorrento on our website. One of the top things that you have to do when you're here in Capri is definitely get on a boat, get on the water, and circumnavigate the island. A little private tour that's gonna take you to a couple of key stops. A small group boat tour or private boat allows you to circumnavigate the island, glide past seven hidden grottos, and sail beneath the iconic Faraglioni rocks. This multi-hour mini cruise is the best way to not only experience the island, 
but also hear great stories. One of the most popular sights to see here in Capri, if not all of Southern Italy, is the Blue Grotto. It's right over there and you see the rowboats entering it. It's the only way to actually get inside the Blue Grotto and the most popular times to visit it are between 12 and two. The Blue Grotto or Grotta Azzurra, as I learned from my guide, is the most famous sea cave on the northwest side of Capri, known for its glowing crystal blue waters, accessible only by rowboat. The unique blue hue creates an otherworldly experience that feels like you're floating on thin air. So unlike Ischia, Capri is actually made out of limestone and the seawater will make erosions into caves like this. And this particular cave, you can actually see a heart there and that's why this is called the Heart Grotto. So Capri is divided into two sections. There's Capri, which you'll see when you arrive at the Marina Grande from your ferry or your tour. You'll take the funicular up and then there's Ana Capri, and that's the section right behind me. It's not as populated as Capri. And then right ahead of us is Punta Carena, which has one of the most important lighthouses right on the island. There's actually quite a lot to see and do here as you're circumnavigating Capri. There's a blue grotto, of course, but then there is the green grotto, which in my opinion is rather spectacular and just as good. The Punta Carena lighthouse perched on Capri's southwestern tip has been casting its light since 1867 and remains Italy's second oldest lighthouse. Here, you can watch the sun melt into the Mediterranean, a view unmatched on the island. Lido del Faro, the only beach club by the lighthouse, offers drinks with a front row seat to Capri's most enchanting sunset. Of course, we have the blue grotto, the green grotto, and now this is the white grotto. And this whole thing used to be under sea level millions of years ago. And what makes this the white grotto is that once the sunlight hits this cave, light is reflected up into the cave. Islands like Capri are notorious for their stories and their legends. And one of the legends is that the erosion made the shape of the Virgin Mary up into those rocks. So if you look closely, you can actually see a shape like the Virgin Mary. This boat tour of Capri can easily be the highlight of any trip to the Amalfi Coast. Most boat tours will show you the top site, but my guide helped me discover the best places to swim and snorkel while exploring the hidden caves on the island, which is clutch since Capri doesn't have easy access to the beach. Circumnavigating the island on a tour like this takes around two to three hours. Tours typically begin and end in the Marina Grande, which is the first place you'll see in Capri. The ferries and hydrofoils all arrive and depart from the Marina Grande on Capri's northwest coast. If you don't have a return ticket to get back to the mainland, you should definitely purchase it in advance as they do sell out during summer months. Tickets can be purchased online or in person next to the Marina Grande. Getting up to Capri's main town above the Marina Grande can be done in a couple of ways. The funicular is the most fun, but often has the longest lines. This runs up to Capri Town from the marina and runs every 15 minutes. There's even buses available in Capri. Small buses connect all the main areas, including the Marina Grande, the Piazzetta in Capri Town, where the nearby bus station is located, Marina Piccola, and Ana Capri. Buses run roughly every 15 minutes. Tickets definitely need to be purchased in advance and can be purchased at the marina. To save time and money, consider getting an all-day pass, which is under 10 euros. So there are several ways of getting around the island and you can get around the island by bus. It's well connected via this small mini bus network. And I paid it 2 euro 40 to get from the center of Capri down to the Marina Grande, which is a big difference from the 40 euro I paid on taxi to get up here. There's even taxis available in Capri. Taxis are the most expensive way to get around. Since there's no private car rentals and cars are limited, this is the most private and most expensive option for getting around the island. If you take the funiculare up to Capri Town, you're gonna wind up right here, which is the epicenter of the village. You have epic views of the sea, plus lots of different shops, the gelato shop, restaurants. This is where you wanna hang out. You would never know it by all the cool and trendy shops here in this square, but Capri is full of history. It was first on the map in 29 BC when Emperor Augustus traded Ischia for Capri. And this square that you see today is called La Piazzetta. And the way you can get up here is by the funicular or by taking a taxi ride, which winds all the way up the mountain. Today, this square is just full of shops and restaurants and cafes. You can come here for an aperitivo or explore the rest of the town. Cheers. Since Capri gets almost 20,000 visitors daily during the peak summer months, there's bound to be some tourist trap restaurants. 
These restaurants typically have guys standing outside waving you to get in or menus in seven different languages. The food and service will definitely not be the best and you'll be treated as a business transaction. So instead of falling into this trap, we asked our local guides to put together a list of their favorite places to eat in Capri. Check out our website for more specifics on where to eat in Capri so you can take the guesswork out and enjoy your vacation. Well, that concludes our time here in beautiful Capri. I'm enjoying one last view before my ferry takes me back to the mainland. I'm Angel Castellanos with The Tour Guy. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and smash that bell so you can find our next video. Happy travels.